Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, praise belongs to Allah. I bear witness that there is but one God, and I bear witness to Jesus and Muhammad and all of the great worthies who came in the great line of divine. I greet you, my black brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I thank Brother Wazir Muhammad, who is certainly one of my teachers and one of my mentors, and has been like a spiritual father to me, along with Brother Majid Muhammad in this city, for this opportunity. And I thank Minister Louis Farrakhan, who we all came here today to hear from. It's been a long time since he has been here in Los Angeles in the flesh. But we are happy to know that he is on the way and will be here today in just a few moments. And I thank the regional minister for the West, Brother Jabril Muhammad, for this opportunity. Just a few words, for I'm hoping that their car or their vehicle is nearing 4137 Crenshaw because we all came to hear from them. But we are just crossing the threshold of the day that is called Easter. Not Easter in terms of a celebration or an observation of a special holiday dealing with Jesus, but Easter, which is a sex holiday attached to the name of a sex goddess of white Europe of the Teutonic tribe called the goddess Easter. Nothing to do with Jesus, but who we want to talk to you about today is a man named Jesus, a black man named Jesus that has nothing to do with rabbits laying chicken in. A man named Jesus that has nothing to do with Playboy bunnies and Playboy bunny clubs and bunnies for a symbol that deals with white people's backwardness in Europe. We want to talk to you about a black man named Jesus. And that black man, Jesus, in the scripture is also a sign of the black man and black woman here in Los Angeles. The black man and black woman here in the hells of North America. For we have been crucified. We have been hit in the head at the East Gate, as the Masons say. Carried on a westerly course by some ruffians and buried in the north corner under an old rubbish heap under the filth, immorality, indecency, and freakishness, and licentiousness, and homosexuality of Los Angeles, and New York, and San Francisco, and all of these other places. We have been hit in the head and crucified by some ruffians from Europe. The black man and the black woman robbed of their name, robbed of their language, their religion, their culture, their God, their folkways, their mores, their norms, robbed of the very power of their own being and robbed of the very divine desire to line their will up with the will of Almighty God, a people that no longer yearn to be free, a people that now freedom doesn't even cross their mind. They believe that they're supposed to be slaves. They believe that they're supposed to buck dance and tom and scratch and shuffle and knee knock and tap dance for the white man. We are here today as we prepare for Brother Jabril Muhammad to bring on Minister Louis Farrakhan to tell you that this is the hour of the resurrection of the black man. The hour of the resurrection of the black woman. Our resurrection and ultimately our exaltation that we come face to face to meet with God himself. That is our divine rendezvous with destiny today. And so there are those who would like to believe that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is dead and gone. But the old folks ever say, they say, oh, shut up, ain't sleep. And all oh, goodbye, ain't gone. And we want to say just what they say, that all oh, shut up, ain't sleep. And all oh, goodbye, ain't gone. For the Honorable Elijah Muhammad.
prophet has told us, remember, brother and sister, I'll be the winner, living or dead. He said, remember, I'll be the winner, living or dead. Makes no difference. It was in this city 10 years ago, September 1977, that the man who is going to introduce Minister Parkhan to you today was the man who brought him forth again by Allah's power, moving and acting and the word and the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in him and through him. So it is fitting and proper that he would introduce him today. But it's also fitting and proper that he would introduce him today right here in Los Angeles at number 27. We are told that number two at headquarters is the head. That's why I guess they call it headquarters. We are told that New York number seven is the heart of the nation. But you are number 27. You are number two and number seven. So you are where the head and the heart meet. So it is fitting and proper that it was here in this city that the wisdom of Almighty God would come back and His Spirit and His power would come back into the black nation right here in Los Angeles. Truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Yes, you can crush the truth. The enemies have conspired against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. J. Edgar Hoover, the sissy, way up in age before he died, still living with his mud dear, leaving the FBI office and going home to one of his nasty boyfriends. Old J. Edgar Hoover believed that he could kill the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he conspired with agents and provocateurs and hypocrites and wit devious and adversaries of Almighty God and the righteous inside of the nation of Islam, but was not able to destroy the nation of Islam. So truth crushed to the earth will and shall and has indeed come up again. And it started right here in Los Angeles, California. And now, where we had been taught to forget about black, no thought of black, now a teaching to resurrect the black man and black woman has come back again that will make us the cornerstone of a new world order. So we're not only black by popular demand, but we are black by popular demand. <laughs> to have this opportunity to stand at this rostrum, in this auditorium, in this building, at this address, to stand and look into so many faces that I know, for I was in this city, that when the minister stood up, he stood up at that time a man with great conviction, great faith, great strength, and a belief that Almighty God, Allah, intended that the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad be lifted up again. It was in this city. There were no cameras then. There were no flashes of the flash bulb of the photographer. There were no reporters from NBC or CBS or ABC or INN or CNN. Or, there were no reporters from the Los Angeles Times. No reporters around from the Herald Examiner, from the New York Times, from the Chicago Tribune, from none of the newspapers. In fact, everybody believed that Louis Farrakhan and Jabril Muhammad was crazy to even attempt to rebuild the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Some said this teaching is dead and it will never rise again that we have buried this teaching and it will never come back again. And the enemy rejoiced and the enemy believed that there would no longer be a strong voice among black people that could fill them with the power of the truth of the Holy Bible and fill their minds and hearts with the divine supreme wisdom of this book, the Holy Quran, and a good grasp of history and what had happened so that they would know 
what to do in this time and where they are to head in the future. But God is always there watching even when we believe that he is not. And it was God's will, Almighty God, Allah's will, that in this city that the two of them would stand up even in the face of conflict, even in the face of opposition, even in the face of their critics calling them crazy, they were filled with a power and a spirit that was much stronger than anything that the critics or the enemies could come with. And so here we are today in this magnificent structure. But when we started out, we didn't have a brick, a stick, nor a blade of grass. We didn't have a rock, a rail, a spike, a spoke, nor a huff or a puff of smoke. When we started out, we had nothing but our faith and our belief in our God and a belief in what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had told us would come to pass. For he had told us that my mouth is not made to speak idle words. He said, what I say, you can count on it because when I speak it and utter it, then the God sets everything in motion and arranges things that what I speak will come to pass. He had told us that the nation would take a dive. He had told us that the nation would go down to nothing. He had told us of a period called the period of spiritual darkness and the great falling away. And we witnessed that spiritual darkness and that great falling away. But even in our witness of that period of spiritual darkness and that great falling away, somewhere in the midnight hour, somewhere in the dark, there was yet a spark, a spark that would light a flame and set a fire and raise up a blaze in the minds and hearts of black people. And it started right here again in Los Angeles, California. Fitting the prophecy that the sun would rise in the west in the latter day and its rays would shine back toward the east. So you, Los Angeles, here in the earthquake zone, here in the judgment zone, here in one of the worst spots anywhere to be found on the face of the planet Earth, you became the spirit you became the cradle that the nation of Islam at the cornerstone of the black nation in general would have its rebirth, would have its beginning all over again that black people, by God's permission, his divine grace and his divine providence would come up again. And again, we would embark upon the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad where we would begin to build schools for our babies, yeah. universities and colleges, yeah. where we would have farmland growing our own food, yeah. our own canneries and dairies and shopping center complexes, yeah. our own airplanes again, right. as once before, right. flying and hoovering in the air, cargo planes and passenger planes. Right. We are now on that road again yes, by Allah's permission with the strength and the power of a man that it took 40 years in one sense to produce, but trillions of years in another sense to produce, a man that you will hear from in just a few minutes. He's a humble man, but I say to you that he is not an ordinary man. He is a man who doesn't want to be called messenger. He doesn't want to be called messiah. He doesn't want to be called Peter and Paul and John and James and Noah and anybody from the scripture. He's a man who will not even wear the title honorable, though he is an honorable man. He will not even allow us to call him honorable. He says, that is the title of my father and my leader and my teacher, and I cannot wear his title. He said, I would be happy if you would just mean it, just mean it, and call me brother. If you would call me brother and mean it, he said, that would mean more to me than all of the accolades, all of the titles that you could attempt to bestow upon me. For he says that I am not one to lift myself up. He said, my teacher told me to make his great commission known. And he said that if my teacher told me to lift him up and that he would draw all men unto him and women if he himself 
is lifted up. So he's a man that is not proud, not pompous. He can go into any city and on a minute's notice, the people come out in great numbers to hear him. He went into New York City some years back, not Madison Square Garden, and over 75,000 black people turned out to hear this student of Elijah Muhammad, this trumpet of Elijah Muhammad, the voice of Elijah Muhammad. 75,000 black people turned out to hear him. We had to fly him in in a helicopter. The traffic was backed up for miles around, and we had to bring him in in a helicopter. Every national organization, brothers and sisters, in this country, the major black organizations have invited the minister, Louis Farrakhan, to be their keynote speaker. The National Convention of Black Psychologists, the National Convention of Black Sociologists, the National Convention of Black Executives from Corporate America who work in the executive positions of the multinational Fortune 500 corporations, when they met in Washington, D.C., these top black executives invited Louis Farrakhan to be their keynote speaker. When the National Convention of Black Policemen met, the black policemen called Louis Farrakhan as their keynote. And even under the attack of the Jews, it was the National Convention of Black Mayors in St. Louis when the black mayors called Louis Farrakhan to be their keynote speaker. The National Association of Black Manufacturers, even the black cadets and top brass at West Point, the white man's West Point, when they wanted to bring in guidance for the cadets, they brought in Louis Farrakhan to West Point to give guidance to them so I'm saying to you that this man, who we have not heard from in this city since he packed the forum in Inglewood, with opposition everywhere. You, some of you were there, it was packed wall to wall black in the forum. The Jews were raging. Uncle Tom Bradley was raging, talking about he wanted to be governor. He wanted to go to the state house and shouldn't even be allowed to go to the outhouse. So let us receive him well to Los Angeles, Dennis to Louis Farrakhan. And bring on Brother Gabriel Muhammad to introduce him. I thank you very much for your attention.